is Ayatollah Khamenei's rule declared illegitimate by Iranian Islamic scholars. Guys, like, I cannot emphasize how significant this is. This is like the call out of the past 40 years. It's like the it's such a big call out. Okay. Recently, Islamic scholars and seminarians from many religious schools in Iran are challenging the authority and legitimacy of Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei's leadership due to the crimes committed by his regime. In a statement released on the 30th of September, an anonymous collective of from seminary schools in Qom, Mashhad, and Tehran, the country's holiest cities, claimed that, quote, none of the influential officials and people with a platform are mushtaheds and do not have seminary education. A mushtahid is considered an authoritative Islamic scholar whose interpretations of jurisprudence are accepted as original and valid by contemporaries. It is one of the highest levels of Islamic scholarship and a prerequisite for the position of supreme leader as dictated by the constitution of the Islamic Republic of Iran itself. The group also clarified that they are breaking their silence over the ongoing violent crackdown on protesters. They considered it their, quote, religious and moral duty to inform the rulers and the nation of their opinion. Despite being a legal requirement to wear the hijab in Iran, the group of clerics and their students clarified that, quote, the compulsion to observe hijab has no Sharia reason. Okay, this is significant. You know, this, this is incredibly has been, significant. <laughs> this has been an open secret. It's not even a secret. Like ever since Khamenei has become the supreme leader, from the very beginning, it was clear to everybody that his leadership him being the supreme leader of Iran, violates the conditions for being a supreme leader by Iran's own constitution. Not just Iran's constitution, the Islamic Republic of Iran's constitution. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, the Islamic Republic of Iran's constitution, right? The government's the regime's constitution, right? Because he's not a merja, he's not even a mujtahid. And that was a condition for somebody to be a supreme leader. So a mujtahid is somebody who has um, been teaching Islamic law and Islamic jurisprudence and a whole bunch of other theological nonsense for a while and has been recognized. Okay, Susanna's mic is on, even though she left away. She went left. Um, I'm going to turn it off. Um, so it's not... So she, he's recognized officially and officially by a whole bunch of other mujtahids to be a mujtahid. So he's teaching. He has passed this whole bunch of levels. He has, I don't know, check mark a whole bunch of, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know how the um, categorization works, but eventually a whole bunch of other very well recognized mujtahids officially recognized as a mujtahid. Okay. And then a mujtahid in, in you know, um, an Islamic scholar or teacher or somebody who could give rulings who somebody who could do ijtihad and give like um make clarifications on how islamic uh, jurisprudence is supposed to be followed and stuff okay who has a decent amount of following and people who emulate you in shia islam is considered a marja so marja is like one level higher than mujtahid you become a mujtahid and you become then you become a marja okay khamenei wasn't a marja he wasn't even a goddamn mujtahid when he became the supreme leader. A, a, a major violation of Iran's constitution, right? So now, and this has been like a whole bunch of mullahs in Iran know this and were like, they kind of pissed about this, okay? Because he was, he, Khamenei has been pissing on all their, like they are way higher than him when it comes to uh, Islamic, like your, you know, how what the level that he is based on their standards he's below a lot of these people and he's now the supreme leader and the main merja not just in iran okay but in the shia world okay in the shia world above sistani okay apparently in iraq sistani who's the main actual merja in shia islam okay because he he has high, way higher credentials than khamenei based on these based on in all this Islamic mumbo jumbo based on their own standards, right? So for Khamenei to be more, have a bigger following and be considered more powerful and more 
uh, recognized authority in Shia Islam for somebody who's like at such a low level, okay, when it comes to uh, religious credentials, is like him pissing on their entire standards, right? And these, this has been a major grievance that all these mullahs have had for all these years. But the fact, I know when I was a kid back in Iran, I remember some mullahs said something one time, and I don't know, they disappeared or something. There's something happened to them. I don't know how they shut them up. I don't remember exactly how they managed to shut them up. But they usually don't say much, okay? These mullahs. But now the fact that all these people are coming out and saying it openly like this shows that as much as big of the anti-religious aspect of these protests are right now in Iran, the religious side is also very significant, right? And the anti-regime protest in Iran is weakening the confidence and the support for the regime enough for these other mullahs to grow enough balls right now to religious balls to come out and say that you know now is the time for us to talk about this multi-decade grievance that we have had with your supreme leadership and this is significant okay because as even even if the streets of iran are filled with protesters okay there's a sect of iran that is very religious that is wondering like yeah is this like you know i want to make sure i'm islamically Correct when I'm opposing this Miss Mofo, right? Uh, and when all these mullahs come out and say like, "Yeah, this guy's legitimacy is questionable," and blah blah blah, that makes the religious part of Iran also more likely to join the non-religious part of Iran in joining the opposition against the regime. So that's why this is so significant. This is the regime's base. The religious Iranians are the base of this republic so-called republic right if the non-religious are lost but if you lose the religious then then you are the, the, the it will be it will be a house of cars the main pillars that this regime is founded upon is looking very shaky but if you lose the religious people but yeah you, you, you want to say something there is so much about this report that i want to get into so first of all okay I don't know if it's because I can only read this through auto translate, right? But I actually have the statement in Farsi and then auto translated from English. So we can go over that if you'd like. I think it would be really fun. Um, but they go after everyone. What was reported in like English media was just like a little like about Khamenei and a little bit about Iran's president Raisi. And they talk about how Raisi's education is trash. And they're like, he makes mistakes that even like minor age students wouldn't make. <laughs> like, but it, it was so funny when I read the full statement because they go after everyone. It's not just Khamenei, it's not just Raisi. Like at, on all these different levels of government, they're calling out all these officials and basically saying, you're uneducated, you're vulgar, you don't know what you're talking about. He's only known as an average translator of some texts. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> so like, so to be calling out and insulting everyone, I'm like, this is juicy. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, this is so they don't go after Khamenei like that, right? So Khamenei has lower credentials than a lot of uh, Mujtahids in Iran, but he is educated, okay? He's like well read and educated. He's just not high in credentials when it comes to religious standards by all these other Mujtahids. So that's the supreme leader, okay? Um, and I don't think they would dare talk about him like that. They would challenge his supreme leadership, maybe as like as they have, but they wouldn't talk so insultingly about him. The president, the president, which is not doesn't have that level of authority and respect or sacredness as the supreme leader, he he he's an embarrassment. Raisi, that's what they're talking about. He is he finished sixth grade elementary school. That's his highest level of education, okay? And he doesn't seem to be able to speak, not English, but Persian, his mother language. He's like, he's, he sucks at it, right? So, and it's very embarrassing. So they went, so they challenged Khamenei's Supreme Leadership Authority, but they went after Raisi hard. Like, in, like they 
Like it was burn after burn after burn. It was embarrassing. <laughs> I was reading this. And I'm like, God damn. <laughs> um. Yeah, but but here's the thing: doing sick burns on Racy is an indirect attack on Khamenei as well. Okay. Yes. Because this pre the last elections in Iran, which Racy became the president, uh, it was some sh sham elections even according to the pro-regime people right so previous elections some anti-regime people were like this is nonsense this is not even a real election um but this time it was so transparently um you know a sham election that even the pro-regime people were like okay come on like at least maybe dress it up a little bit better the next time the, and the, by the way the way that they run uh, elections our sham elections is not like a conspiracy theory where you like change the votes and stuff like that. Okay. So not, we're not doing like a, a Trump, like a conspiracy theory. Uh, the way they do it is that the candidates, not everybody can become a candidate, right? So they pre-select the candidates um, and all the ones, you know, so basically they pre-select the candidates in a way that the person that they want to be elected gets elected. Like, and that's how Racy got elected. So that's why um, it was basically not really an election. Oh, we got um, a new, uh, oh, here, new member. No man yeah, 041 no one just, just became, became a member. new member. Thank oh, you for yeah. becoming, welcome to Satan's Minions, No man. Thank you for becoming yeah, a member. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> and he All says, right, I'm not late today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> oh, not new as well. Maybe he's just renewing his. Welcome ah, membership. okay. Well, welcome again, okay. anyways. I love. Okay. I love to say it. Um, yeah. Okay, so there is so much more I want to get into about this report. Um, I've been reading it in the English auto translation, but like sometimes that doesn't work very well, and a lot of it doesn't make sense. So I pulled it up in Persian and English. If you want to like go over it, Arm, and let me know. Because there's so much about this that is so important in terms of religious significance because they are, obviously, I don't, um, like, observe the authority of it, but within their own internal system of Islam and their own internal logic, they are going through and talking about why this is illegitimate. And so I thought that was so important and interesting to go over. So, like, for example... They basically say in this statement that anyone who is oppressing the people should be subject to the retribu retributive justice of, I can never pronounce it right, Kisos? Kisos? Kisos. Kisos, thank you. Um, and so that itself, I was like, oh, boom. And basically, they compare the current regime and the supporters and the enforcers of this regime to the, to, how do you pronounce it? Muavia. Wow, really? I didn't know that, yes. Muavia. Um, so in Shia, okay, yeah, Muavia was a, um, the first Umayyad uh, Khalif after the Khalif of, of the Islamic world, after the four uh, rightly guided ones, according to Sunni Islam, the rightly guided ones, Khalifs. Um, Muavia was the, basically the, the leader of the caliphate of Islam, uh, of, the, of the Islamic world, who she has hate, right? She has considered Muawiyah and his son Yazid to be the oppressor of their main imams, um, Hassan, uh, Ali, Hassan, and Hussein, right? So this is significant. To compare them, to compare this regime to Muawiyah is compare them to an Islamically, um, an Islamic leadership that they consider that Shia Islam considers fasc fascistic, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, this is so important. Okay, so here's what I'm going to read. The translation is a little bit weird, so hold, stay with me. We, a group of students and teachers in the seminaries of Qom, Mashhad, and Tehran, declare the government must immediately end the violence against the protesters and stop killing people, release the detainees, and as soon as possible, hold a referendum, referendum under the supervision of an international organization. Due to the deaths of most of the voters and the non-participation of the current 
non-participation of the majority of the current population in Iran. The past rev referendum has no validity for the current time, and the government's commanding and humiliating gathering on the streets are not only delegitimizing, but have become a source of ridicule. The Iranian wow. people have a right to protest, and in case of violence against them, they have the right to legitimately defend themselves against the oppressors. So can you Jesus talk Christ. about what they're referring to in terms of the referendum for people that don't know? So after the Islamic Revolution in 1979, um, there was a referendum for people to decide what type of government they want. Okay, And reportedly, this we learned this in elementary school in Iran as well. I don't know how real this number is, but reportedly 98% of the people after the Islamic Revolution in 1979 in that referendum, voted for an Islamic Republic, right? Um, 98%, okay? So uh, we don't, I, I, I'm, a, lot of, a lot of people against the regime say that's lie, that's nonsense, okay? I don't know how big of a lie this is. I wasn't there, okay? Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know really, okay? But these people, these mullahs are saying that even if that, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, are saying even like, that 98% referendum does not apply to the people today. Most Iranians today were not taking part in that referendum. So the, the Iranians that are living today have not chosen an Islamic Republic. We need another refer referendum. Is that yeah. fair? Is that yeah. what they're saying? Okay, okay. That's what wow. they're saying. And yeah. either the I mean, 98% is one of those numbers. You know, again, I, I don't, I don't know. 98%. I don't know if the referendum was real or not. But 98% is one of those numbers that you get from fake fake referendums. You know what I mean? Like you get from Saddam or like in North Korea. Bashar al-Assad like and Bashar his dad. Bashar al-Assad. Yes, yeah. yes. That, that's, the kind of refer, that's the kind of numbers that you get. So that's why there it's There is no likely. population that agrees yeah. with anything to 98% levels. What? Yeah, yeah. Also, there's a... There's a I, I also have people in my family that swear that they were allowed to vote three or four times given that they were voting yes to the islamic republic right mm. i don't know if they're lying to me or not but these are also reports that i heard so it's, i'm very skeptical about the 98 percent. but sure yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah yeah um and uh this was so interesting so they use this quote about muavia and they say we do not know any fitna greater than your guardianship over this nation what, say that again? We do not know any fitna greater than your guardianship over this nation. Okay, this is too extreme. Is this real? I mean, not too like this is like this is this is like execution worthy language. I mean, this has been reported on by Radio Farda, Iran Wire, and Iran. But this Iran. language is this language is real coming out of the mullahs in Rome? This is what I found in terms of what they were referencing back to from hmm. Zaytuns. Zaytuns, yeah. This is insane. This is very radical. We yeah, have crossed yeah. a lot of red lines in Iran in the past three weeks. <laughs> like, God damn it. <laughs> Armin's what? head is spinning. He's like, I never <laughs> thought I would see this. Yeah. Um, you should, Bob, I read this as well, right? This is crazy. No, he didn't have time oh. to read it this morning. Okay, okay. Um, Wait, where there was something, ba 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 ba. Sorry, the translation to some of this is not very good. But there was something else I wanted to read. Oh my God, Armin! They called this regime shirk. No, what? So read, read it. Uh, Mogang, I can't do the gray. I can't do gray sound. So forgive me, Mogre, Mogre. Niani, who was a true example of a cleric and mullah, and not like this uneducated and worldly person, writes in his precious book, uh, Taibinia Alame, quote, religious tyranny consists of arbitrary wills that those associated with clerical politics declare as religion, and they force the ignorant nation to obey him through extreme ignorance and lack of knowledge of the requirements of their religion. And this obedience and following is not based on the decree of God, Therefore, it is of the level of polytheism. Wow. 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 Man, they've they gone beyond just declaring this person 
not fit for being a supreme leader, they're questioning his state as being a Muslim. They're questioning his faith. They're questioning him. They're not just damning him to not be uh, as the supreme leader. They're, da- they're questioning whether he is a Muslim or not. Now this is like this is way this is very extreme. This is where they're tech fear- they're tech fearing him. They're tech fearing yeah. him. Uh- <laughs> this is yeah. crazy. Yeah. We explicitly declare that this government has nothing to do with Islam and has made Islam merely a pretext to rule over the people and has no qualms about slaughtering it for its own survival. Jesus Christ. Cooperation with the government is an example of helping the oppressors. And as a result, it is forbidden. They're saying it is haram to support yeah. and enforce this the will is- of this regime. So in terms of what you were saying, in terms of speaking to a religious base, like think about that declaration. They also talk about in this statement how they were threatened by the office of Mushtaba Khamenei, Khamenei's son, who is basically likely going to be his successor. Mm -hmm, And talk mm -hmm. about how they were threatened with basically death if they break their silence. But what do you think? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. What do you think about this declaration of helping the oppressors is forbidden? Well, I mean, are these people marjas? Like, I know, like, what is the, what, what is the level? What, what's, what's their power level <laughs> of these? We don't know. This, okay. We don't know how many. We don't know who. We just know that this is a collection of scholars and seminarians from Qom, Mashan, and Tehran. There, there was no signatories. I, there's no signatories. Okay. Because if so, because a lot of these people could be marjas, right? Mm-hmm. And and if they're marjas, I mean, I don't know if they're marjas or not. That means that they have a following, a following that of religious people that are supposed to accept their ruling, you know. And if they make it haram to follow this regime, that would be I don't know a major uh, fallout of. I mean, you know, many people religiously being obligated, maybe even to not support this regime. That would be crazy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. This 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 one quote I thought was really interesting. It is quoted from the great Islamic scholar and commentator of the Holy Quran, Alama. uh, Wait, 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 wait. This is funny. (laughs) No, no, oxymoron's comment is very funny, okay? So because they're accusing him of being a polytheist, an oxymoron who is like a hand, traditional, like a cultural Hindu, okay, who is officially, as by, according to Islamic standard, a polytheist, he's like, please do not associate this guy with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. like, we do not like, associate we, with the regime. <laughs> we do not as we polytheistic communities don't don't want to be don't want to associate with this regime. <laughs> like how dare you, Mullahs? Do not insult us by comparing this man to us. That's amazing. That's good. That's good. I like it. Go on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is so, I just thought this was really interesting. They have this quote in this statement where they say the first martyr of this revolution was Islam. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. By the way, we don't agree with any of this. Okay. Islam is horrible. These people are mullahs. So they're saying this is like, obviously, um, the the real Islam, the true Islamic standards is even worse than this regime. Okay. So true. But but we that's not the point that we want to discuss here okay the point is that we're talking about their internal conflict okay even though we did disagree with these mullahs that oh islam is i don't know better than um better than i don't know what is it say something good but it's really good and we like it and has good standards and it's pro-human and it's like anti-fascist or stuff like that even though we disagree with that the point is that these people are having a major internal conflict right now, okay? The higher-ups in the, the regime and the religious people are turning on religious people in Iran. And if the Islamic Republic of Iran ever is toppled, is not going to be because the non-religious were fighting with the religious, okay? The only way that this regime will topple is because the hardliners turned on each other, right? So we are seeing, I'm not saying this will happen, 
but we are seeing what is required for such a thing to happen. And mm -hmm. the only way that the regime falls is for us to see more hardliners turning on mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. yeah, and also just because I'm a nerd, it's very interesting for me to see how they use their own scripture, their own internal logic of the faith to argue against right. the dominant clerical class. I, I find that really interesting. Um, there's so many good insults in this. It's so funny. So they give a huge list of people who are involved in the judiciary. And they say, there is no doubt that the average level of intelligence, literacy, consciousness, and culture of the Iranian nation is much higher than the officials and tribunes of this government. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it with the birds? The sick, what? Oh, savage mullahs. <laughs> that should be that should have been the title the title of this new segment should have been savage mullahs turned into Khamenei's regime that's what it should have been <laughs> <laughs> we, we can have it the clip be named that that's so yeah. funny this government is a clear example of present presenting the scoundrels and delaying the virtuous <laughs> oh my gosh yeah oh my god here's another one they're like um going after the guy who's the the former secretary of the headquarters for um commanding good and forbidding evil you know which is like a, a very islamic concept and saying however he is unable to comply with the minimum requirements and his behavior and speech are a source of spiritual hum humiliation <laughs> <laughs> oh my god there's another guy where they're just like he's not even that good he's only known as an average translator at best i'm like god <laughs> damn <laughs> um so uh, yeah and basically they in terms of the statements on the mandatory hijab they basically say that there is nothing in, in sharia or interpretations that says that this should actually be something that's like mandated by the state all that stuff so i thought that was really interesting but um i think before we move on to the next news segment um it is worthwhile to talk about some other updates that have been happening because Wait, before we do that can i address day. some questions can i address some questions in the live chat yes this yes so kian is saying had, uh, had khomeini the conditions to be the supreme uh, leader why did he then designate khomeini yeah khomeini did have the conditions to be the supreme leader i mean he became um he wrote the conditions <laughs> um so obviously he would write the conditions that would make him fit as well <laughs> right so yeah khomeini did meet the conditions uh but and then the follow-up question is why did he then designate khomeini honestly he didn't um hashimi rafsanjani who who is dead he claimed that he heard Khomeini pick him. Okay, that's all. Okay, so it's just and also, so so it's just word of mouth that Khomeini had picked Khomeini. Um, but Khomeini himself has in writing that do not believe anybody any quote by me, as, unless it's my audio, actual audio, or my writing with my signature on it. Okay. So Khomeini has clarified himself in writing that do not believe anybody that when they quote me. And Khomeini's pre, uh, supreme leadership is based on hearsay of one person that claims that he has heard Khomeini pick Khomeini. So Khomeini didn't actually, I think, pick Khomeini. In fact, Khomeini, in fact, what we have on record by Khomeini is him saying to Khomeini that he has not understood the concept of the guardianship of the jurist to the slightest he told him that you do not even begin to based on he got angry with him at some point and he's like you have no clue about this entire the um, school of thought like you are below the big level of even understanding any of this God that's damn. what Khom that's what Khomeini told Khomeini when he was alive <laughs> 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 well, and Khamenei himself has said, like, I cry tears of blood for a nation that has me as its leader. Didn't he yeah, say that? Bef right. And before that, he said, he, we have video of him, which was eventually leaked and everybody saw, that obviously I don't have the credentials to be the supreme leader. He himself, like when they were 
discussing become in making him the supreme leader that's what he said and it's we have that recording video of it that you're like obviously i don't obviously it's illegal for me to be the supreme leader he said that we have that on video so there's that's that. so crazy yeah um so i think we should wait. give some general updates into what's been happening recently oh wait do you want to address wait. this question first yeah so something I don't remember is saying, isn't the Islamic Republic of Iran founded? No, founded upon the five pillars of Islam. The five pillars of Islam is mostly emphasized on the Sunni side, not on the Shia side. Um, mm. Something Okay, something I don't remember is also saying, so what's the guarantee that the next government won't be a uh, hardline Islamist? There is there is no, no guarantee. guarantee. There is no guarantee in anything. Um, yeah, but what you could do is make it less likely. But no, there is no guarantee. Um, Okay, it's just hard to imagine, though, given that Iranian people really want secular democracy. <laughs> All right, so there's there's that. Um, okay, go on. So, okay, in terms of updates, um, according to, let me pull it up here, um, Iran Human Rights, which is a Norwegian-based NGO, um, there have been at least 185 people killed and approximately 19 of those who were killed were children. Um, they say that they're doing uh, extra work to confirm the ages of people involved. Because um, what they do is they actually go and look at people's death certificates. They confirm what happened with their families and stuff like that. So it's more thorough than a lot of other ways of determining this kind of thing. And it's important to note that half, essentially half of that number, 90 out of 185 of those killed are in Sistan and Baluchistan. Now, for those who don't know, on, what was it? Not this, what was the actual date? Okay, on September 30th. On September 30th in Sistan and Baluchistan province, which is a largely Baluch area, and they are mostly Sunnis, not Shias, Muslims. There was prayers friday prayers that were happening and then after the friday prayers a group of teenagers there's kind of conflicting stories but basically people were going to protest the fact that a local police commander rape'd okay i can't say the real word because of youtube r worded a like 14 15 year old girl and so there are some reports that what happened was during or after Friday prayers, a group of teenagers went to a local police station and started throwing stones at the police station. Other reports are that people after Friday prayers went and just started protesting themselves. Basically, the police just started shooting at people. Some reports even say shooting into the mosque, which is the largest Sunni mosque in the country. And there have been hundreds of people injured. And over the past few weeks, since the 30th, just the death toll has continued to rise from this event. The death toll is now reportedly 90 people. So the government committed a massacre, straight up committed a massacre against its own citizens. Um, they were shooting at people from inside the police station. There are some reports that they were using, I, I've seen videos of them using snipers to shoot 16 year olds. And there's another report that a, a few days later, four other Baluch citizens were driving in an open roof car and were killed from a military helicopter. So huge death toll. And it, yeah, it's just been dubbed Zahidan's Bloody Friday because of this massive massacre. And there's a huge um, lack of available blood for the people who are you know in critical condition. And so one thing that I actually have really liked to see is that I've seen like a a pan national movement to do blood drives for the people in Zahedan. And I saw photos of people giving blood and they like showed a little sign of where they're from to like give blood to Zahedan. And um, I think this is really important because this is another example of like really firm multi-ethnic unity in Iran. Um, where previously it's become like e more easy to divide people on the basis of religious or like, uh, not religious, ethnic or tribal lines. Um, PK is asking, when did this happen? This happened on September 30th. So very, very recently. 
Um, and it's not getting that much attention, which shocks me. Um, because they're poor. Because it's yeah. the poorest region of Iran. One of the poorest regions of Iran. And they're not like, um, it's far away from central cities. That's why it's not. Actually, um, Iran International acknowledged that they were uncovering it as much as stuff in major cities. Um, because a lot of people started attacking them. Because like we have more death in these areas than in Tehran and Shiraz. And well, you're not covering it. These are also Iranians. And they came and they acknowledged that they're not covering it as much. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not just foreign sources that weren't covering it as much. It was also Iranian sources weren't even covering it as much, which is kind of sad. Mm -hmm. I mean, not kind of sad, very it, sad. Yeah. And it accounts so thank for you. Half, but thank half you, the thank death you, toll. Susanna, which is very great that you're covering it. So thank you, Susanna. Oh, you thank you. <laughs> I try. I think it's really important to talk about. Um, and so there's also been a lot of stuff happening in Iran over the past 24 to 48 hours alone, like crazy amount of stuff. So the nature of the protests in Iran has shifted a little bit, whereas previously you'd kind of see pockets of unrest kind of spontaneously happen across different cities. I mean, across 80 cities across the entire nation, at least, if not more. But they would kind of be like more spontaneous and smaller and so it'd be easier for special forces or the government to come and crack down on them so we've seen a shift and what i've read reported is that in, okay here's instead of sporadic demonstrations every day which is easier to control for the government weekly protests appear to be more effective showing the government's inability to suppress protesters when crowds are larger and appear simultaneously in many cities and many locations so yesterday was was one of the first more concerted and organized examples we've seen of that where people said okay on saturday we're going out doesn't matter what city you're in we're we're, we're hitting the streets and so it was kind of declared right and there alongside of that there has also been strikes that have been declared so it, across many cities like the bazaars the shopkeepers they went on strike they closed everything they joined the street protests students you know going on strike joining the street street protests and i have read some reports armin this is very significant that oil workers in Abadan have started to strike. That's very significant. And That's very because significant. it was the strike of the oil workers that partially issue, was a major factor in issuing in the overthrowing of the Shah. Can you like talk about that a bit for people who don't know? Yeah. So the buzzeries and the people who work in the oil, oil industry, they. Um, if they join the uh, the strikes right now there is like nationwide strikes in iran and the buzzeries which the people who work in the market haven't been join joining joining that significantly the main ones haven't been joining the strikes until yesterday right and a lot of people think that, that that's the backbone of the market and let you know it, during the shah time them and the people within the oil industry when they joined the strikes that was like really started um, get targeting the very, um, you know, financial resources of the regime, right? And that, given how historically we have a record of how that started, um, how that was a major influence in, you know, getting the dominoes fall one after another, a lot of people were waiting to see that happen during these protests as well. So people are saying if history repeats itself, now that we have strikes spreading to the oil industry and now also the buzzer is joining in, people are like very excited to see where this goes because, you know, if history has any thing to go by, then this could be also lead to the same conclusion, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. There's also been, so in response to this more organized demonstration, pan-national, demonst not pan-national, um, uh, this organized demonstration across the nation, things have gotten very violent. Like I, the stuff flowing across my social media is absolutely crazy. Like there are people who are honking their horns and protests just getting shot dead in their cars in Kurdistan. Like images of women just getting shot in the head in the street in Mashhad. It's, it's very violent, but I've also, seen 
a new level of counter demonstration of protesters getting more organized and using street formations, blocking roads, like seeing, I don't know how to, creating barricades that um, I haven't seen since like my time in Antifa, right? Like this is a level of organization that I'm familiar with and I can identify. So I'm like, oh shoot, like things are heading in that direction now. Um, so that felt very, very significant to me. And because of how harsh things were yesterday, I expect the death toll to unfortunately rise sharply because we are just beginning to get some sort of insight into what happened. And things are cracking down really hard right now. So like I've said before, it's so important to keep the pressure on internationally. People ask us all the time, how can we help the people of Iran? Well, really, there isn't that much that most of us can do. But what we can do is very easy, okay? All we have to do is continue to amplify the hashtags that are trending within the movement, keep telling our friends about it, keep telling our family about it, pressure our politicians to cover, to respond to it, pressure our mainstream media to cover this appropriately, accurately, because that's been a huge problem that's been happening in American media, is in the New York Times, they posted this big article about how, oh, people are boycotting over economic sanctions, blah, 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 for their, they're protesting for the economy. No, the people in the streets of Iran could not be more clear about what this is about. They're not complaining over cost of living. This chance, the slogans are so clear. The hijab is the excuse. Our goal is the Islamic Republic. Death to the dictator. <laughs> like, the, the, the overwhelming emphasis is for civil liberties and an overthrow of the current government. So we need our mainstream medias to be covering this appropriately to accurately be the voice of the people. We can help amplify that. There was a huge demonstration of Iranians Americans in Los Angeles recently at CNN, basically protesting in front of CNN over their inappropriate coverage of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that's important to think about is what we can go speak to our politicians about, because a lot of people have a lot of different feelings about sanctions and oh my gosh should we go and intervene blah 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 and the overwhelming message i hear from the iranian community is we do not need your help we do not need you to intervene okay but we do need you to do is stop negotiating, stop complying, stop legitimizing and validating the authority of our murderers. So a lot of people are calling for um, expelling all diplomats. A lot of people are calling for shutting down embassies. What do you think about that, Armin? I don't think that will happen, but pushing for it will highlight, will have an impact you know what i mean like yeah closing down they're not going to close down the embassies but you trying to push for it will make them reduce their support yeah 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 have an impact that's basically what i think as well um yeah. and so what yeah. what do you think about the call for sanctions though because one thing that i've noticed that is very interesting is that american lefties because you know obviously that's who i'm familiar with are constantly saying oh you know sanctions are so bad they hurt the people blah 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 like you this is and then they take it to the level of you know this is american imperialist violence and listen to iranians like Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, okay, attention. bet when I listen to Iranians, people who are from Iran grew up there, spent most of their adult life there, or people who are still there, they're like, do I support the current sanctions? No, I want them harsher. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, sanction the fuck out of my country, okay? 
That's, yeah. that's what they tell me. They're like, we grew up there. We've seen that any lenience that is given to the regime, any money that's released back to them does not go to us. The money goes towards Hezbollah, Hash the Shabi. It goes to the Houthis. Like it goes to destabilizing the region. The money doesn't go to our well-being. It goes to buying better batons and surveillance from China to oppress us. So if that's going to be the case, sanction the fuck out of them anyways. Yeah, that's because I mean, like that's my perspective. But I am in contact with a particular yes. vein of people, right? Yes. So. That's the narrative from a lot of anti-regime um, advocates, okay? Um, but that's the kind of people that me and you hang out with from the among Iranians, right? It, the, criti the criticism of what we're saying is that that might not be the represent a good representation of what most Iranians think. Right? Exactly. Um, so, true. But regardless of what most Iranians think, and I know that's how, like, a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? That's the only thing we have to pay As an Iranian, to. I can say that? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't have to be an Iranian I'm to kidding. say it. You, you don't need to be an Iranian to say this, right? Um, in response to human rights violations and other violations of international law, right? the international community and the world liberal order needs to react and there is only three forms of reaction unless i'm missing something let me know okay reaction number one do nothing reaction number two military intervention reaction number three sanctions okay economic pressure it sanctions or just economic pressure as a whole to just to cover everything right given that doing nothing should not be an option given that most people agree that military intervention is not an ideal solution that leaves us with only one option right this option has problems there's no option that is cost free a lot i support the sanctions but unfortunately a lot of people who support the sanctions deny the fact that innocent Iranians will be suffering from them. I support the sections even while I agree that innocent Iranians will suffer from them, right? But everything you do, there's a cost to it. What you have to, whatever you do and whatever you don't do, innocent people will suffer because of decisions that are made or because of the decisions that are not made. So the challenge is not to eliminate all suffering because that's impossible. The challenge is to come up with options that reduces the suffering the most. The sanctions on Iran will unfortunately make a lot of Iranians who are not part of the problem suffer, right? But the alternative will make more people suffer. There needs to be a reaction to countries that are violating standards and norms that has made the world a much, much more peaceful place ever since World War II, right? There needs to be a penalty for violations of these laws. This is why a lot of these leftists, okay, at least the liberal ones, not the, progress, not the far left ones, right, agree with the sanctions on Russia while they're condemning the sanctions on Iran. Mm. They agree with the sanctions on Russia even while they agree that innocent Russians will suffer from it. They're like, yes, we know innocent, Ru innocent Russians will suffer from it, but Russia, the country of Russia, the, the Putin, uh, Putin's administration has violated international laws and there needs to be a reaction by the international community. And unfortunately, Russians will suffer, but this is what we must do, okay? Or else we're setting a new set standard or a new norm that is okay to do. The same logic will apply to iran that's the comparison i make i might be wrong about this i'm happy i'm happy to for, for for you guys to come and challenge me on this right um we do have a super chat that we need to read and... yes um yeah. so trells gave us 100 danish krona oh my goodness thank you thank you um 
saying, fun thought, Iran's 1906 constitution required any new law to, quote, receive royal approval. And since the Shah never signed anything related to the Islamic Republic, the whole damn thing is legal. Illegal. There's been a lot of people who have talked about trying to invoke this and basically as a way to dismantle the current government. And then so the monarchy would be back in full effect just merely for the exercise of getting rid of the Islamic Republic. But then a lot of people are like, well, then we're going backwards to monarchy. There's a lot of problems with it. No, 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 Charles. This is, this is the thing. The old laws don't apply, okay? We, the, I mean, the that regime fell. So people are like, okay, those, yeah, it's illegal based on that regime. We have a new regime with new laws. Okay. So we don't care about the fact that we are violating the previous regime laws. Okay. We have, but the, the problem with Khamenei right now is that his supreme leadership violates the current existing laws, the current constitution. So that's the main difference here. Yeah. So you could use basically what, what this means is that you don't even have to, you could use the country's own rule. If you apply the current existing rules in Iran, if they were applied, you could remove the Khamenei from supreme leadership. Yeah. From the Islamic Republic's constitution. Yeah. Um, and Ghassan is saying in regards to the bloody Friday of Zahadan, um, a doctor in Baluchistan shared on Instagram that so many of them were being shot from the back. They were running, not attacking. Oh my God. Yeah, it's so bleak. Um, so I'm continuing to keep like a really close eye on Zahidan. Um, Herschel is asking, if the dictatorship is overthrown, then will Armin, Armin visit Iran? And KP has offered to sponsor his visit. <laughs> okay, I will. Do. Okay, no, but if... I have, I was, at some point I decided that no, I would never visit because even if the regime falls, there will still be enough radicals there for me to get stabbed or something because I burned the Quran and stuff like that, right? But I had changed my mind recently. I was like, no, if the regime falls and if a stable secular democracy comes into power, right, I will go there without announcing my visit. So I, I don't think anybody will be able to find me, any people that might be upset with me be able to find me if I just go there without announcing, like just randomly show up. Yeah, I think I, I think I will I really I would be too tempted to go to not go. So I, I will I will go. Can we go to Isfahan together in Shiraz? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I don't know if I actually I don't know if I want to take you because if I get killed. I would be like, okay, I made a stupid mistake. But if I get you killed, then I would feel like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I don't want to. Like, yeah, I would be too worried about getting you killed. So maybe I don't. You know, we'll, we'll see how the you know the dominoes fall. Yeah. We'll see how the cards land. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, oh. um, I, I don't know. I think in terms of everything that's been unfolding over the past twenty four to forty eight hours and. Iran, we're going to get a lot more information co coming out about what happened soon. So, like, definitely stay tuned to this channel. We're going to continue to cover this every week because the the images coming out right now, like, it looks like a war zone in a lot of places. So, oh, yeah. I, I I really want to keep covering this, but we need more details and in, in to emerge first. Wait, let me show you. Yes, this is what I was talking about with how they're fortifying barricades. This is the current, the state of the current protests in Iran. This was yesterday. They're fortifying the streets against the regime. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And they bur they burn this, uh, they burn garbage um, bins and stuff so that, because it helps against the tear gas. Oh, so really? Saying, I was assuming it was for visibility protection. No, no, it helps with tear gas. It reduces the effectiveness of tear gas. Interesting. Uh, this is I a, didn't know that. Yeah, this is in Tehran. Mm. Oh, 
Oh, the other good news is that Canada finally listed the IRGC as a terrorist organization. I can't the entire, believe it wasn't I already. I don't think the IRGC, I think 10,000 IRGC members. Based on the reporting that came out, or maybe it was, I don't know, the statement is they it, were reading, is that the government entire, was reading, that he said IRGC. Okay, let's let's double check that before we confirm okay, okay. it. Because I think, okay, by the way, Canadian government, they had legitimate reason to, their, their reason for not going with it as, uh, was because a lot of people in Iran are forced to serve for IRGC. True. I mean, I know a lot of them. Yes. Yeah, so if they had designated the entirety of IRGC as a terrorist um, institution, many Iranians would not be able to go to Canada, even though they were just forced to serve there. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why. So Canada had a legitimate reason for not going. They could um, make an exemption for people that were forcibly. Concerned. Yeah. Well, that's not how it works. That's why they wanted to go through the legal process of figuring out how to do this. Ah, it's difficult. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This the, now we have to talk about this. Arvin, please, please tell people what this is. This is awesome. This happened yesterday. Oh yeah. Kian is also look at the time and Kian in the left here saying, "Show the news hijacking." That's exactly what I was like. <laughs> Great timing. All right. So, Messian uh, in this caption says, "Breaking: Islamic Republic state-owned TV network hacked." During a, a Khamenei address and the message, the message on the TV said, uh, the blood of our young, the blood of our youth is dripping from your fingers. It's not fingers. The translation is actually from your claws. Ah. Uh, another message displayed, rise up and join us, right? So this was when Khamenei was speaking on Iran's national TV. The TV station got hacked and every Iranian, this is important because this is something like if you come on, like a lot of the stuff that we're saying from the anti-regime people, it's on places where you would have to come look. A lot of Iranians are like not exposed to that. But this was on national TV and it's because, because it's during Khamenei's speech, who would watch Khamenei's speech? There's a lot of people on Khamenei's uh, pro-regime people. So this would, um, you know, this might show a lot of other people who are like stepping in the sidelines or maybe, maybe even pro-regime that it shows them that things are really shaky, you know. Um, it's, it has an effect. It's called the broken window effect. Like when you go to a store and you mm -hmm. see the window is broken, you think like this, this it seems like this store is like going mm -hmm. bankrupt so sooner or stuff. Like so if you notice things like this, if you see stuff, like this in places that they don't seem to belong, a lot of more Iranians will be like, okay, this might be convinced that this regime is on its way out. So this is a, this ha this hack has a major impact. But let's watch Yeah, like, like if you way. go to a neighborhood and there's shattered windows and graffiti everywhere, you're like, hmm, seems a little sketchy. Seems a little unsafe. I don't know. So you're like, okay, that's a very interesting way to put it. Yeah. Anyways, let's watch this. نادر مهدوی که چند بار اسمش رو اینجا آوردید آقایون کسی از دوستان ما که وارد در این موضوعات میگو اگر این نادر مهدوی <تصفيق> And you can see the chant in the back is Zan Zendegi Azadi. Uh, and then there's a target symbol on Khamenei's head with like, I don't know what the fire is. Is this hellfire? Um, I think so. <laughs> is it fire or whatever? Okay. And this text over here says, which means join us and rise up. Uh, and over here it says, which means like the blood of our young is dripping for your, from your claws. You can see the pictures of a, a couple of the girls that have been killed in the recent protests, including Mahsa Amini right here. Yeah, it's Mahsa uh, Amini, uh, Hadith Najafi, Nika Shakrami, and Nika. Uh, Serena Ismailianzadeh, Ismail, Ismail I think is her wow. name. Wow, amazing, amazing, Susanna. Like, I don't think anybody non-Iranian, like, I don't know many non-Iranians that is familiar with these names as much as you are. That's pretty amazing. Incredible. Good job. Um, good. Yeah. Um, so this is very, and, and the chant says, keep saying Zan Zan the Gyozadi, which means woman, life, freedom. That's the chant in the background. Okay. And this face has now been, 
this face is now being memed everywhere like i don't know for people who are listening it 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 cuts off and it cuts to a news presenter and you can tell this is legitimate because in the screen behind him that shows the current feed of the newscast you can see the hack is still going on in the background yeah but the, the face of the presenter is so <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the, the, a lot of people were doubting whether this is a real hack or was it just a web hack or was it like actually on TV as well? And you can know the reason why you know that this was a real hack is because even in the background you could see the hack was still in effect before it switched. So that was like major. They just cut to a different feed. So you can see that it's still happening in the feed in the background until they cut it off. Yeah, but I don't know how they did this. Like a lot of people were like, this is an impossible hack. Like it must, like there must be somebody that works there that has okay, managed I was to talking to Babak off. about this. We, he yeah. had a lot of ideas. So he is 90% sure that this is done that this hacking group which is like the the english translation is like the just of the justice of imam ali or whatever he thinks that this hacking group is basically controlled opposition or no that I mean, that's conspiracy theory that's no 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 or 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 maybe more realistically that it is a group within the government that is unhappy with other elements of the regime that because is more likely especially that that's basically what he emphasized especially to be able to get to something like this a lot of iran's most important infrastructure is on an intranet not the internet so it can't yes, happen yes. from someone outside it has to be someone inside and the other theory is maybe it's mossad because mossad was able to get into the intranet of iran's most sensitive nuclear plant and that's how they that's how they cause the explosions within the nuclear plants but to do that you need to have a human factor you need to have a human asset meaning there has to be a person that physically goes in and do these things gets control of these ports puts something into a computer that can get within the wiring and do the rest of this so this basically can only happen if you have a human asset that can go in and physically manipulate some of this stuff and that's why he was saying okay, to be able to get this level of clearance to execute this kind of thing, you have to be within the regime to some extent. Yeah, um, okay, I do believe that the more likely situation, it's not controlled opposition. This is too costly of a hack, right? This is too costly, like a controlled opposition, like, okay, let's turn that, tear down the regime to make it look like a controlled opposition. Like, I, I think that's too conspiratorial. It is more likely that it is people within the regime or like, there, there are hackers who have access to some people who are sympathetic to them that work within the regime. That is a more likely. I think that would be more, a more likely. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I that, that's we have a control opposition. No, control opposition is something. Else. Control opposition. No, is I know, but what of, he meant. On purpose. Okay, okay. What he meant. Okay, okay, okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, and it's not very, it's that the, the whole idea of having access to people within the regime is not very conspiratorial because we've seen Mossad at least effectively do that. Like we have confirmed report of Mossad doing that effectively. So. Effectively, they seem to do it every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you you know these things and you have access. To the, like I don't know how I would do all this without you. It's so good. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. So on a on a on a less um, on a more serious note, uh, let me just show you how. Oh my god, these motherfuckers! Yeah. <laughs> I like this comment from Bara. He's saying plot twist: the presenter is the mole. <laughs> <laughs> no, but is. I want to show you something is kind of disgusting, um, but I just oh, wanted geez. to show you the yeah. attitude of these anti uh, the regime uh, police. Look at the way. Look, she's coming. This is a woman that is coming to talk to these regime officers to just can you please tone it down, be nice to people. Are you not embarrassed? Are you not ashamed? And stuff like that. That's what a lot of women just walk up to them and say stuff like that. And this is how 
the, these these people respond. Look at this. You see how he just hits her? There was another video just like this. If I could and find it. she's like it. a small woman. Like it almost looks like a child. Well, okay. Yeah. But there was another one that was similar to this. Let me. There's some videos that I can't show you. There was one woman that she was shot in the neck um and she was lying on the ground um oh yeah that was in mashad yeah i can't show you that one yeah we can show sh that on youtube can i show people the one where they overwhelmed the anti-protest can i show oh yeah let me show you this one okay so here's another video of how the regime treats like in like defenseless women right that are just brave enough to walk over to talk to the officers right knowing they have seen other videos where what happens to other women when they just go we try to go talk to them um but they still do it look at this so this is <gasps> look they hit you see how they hit her mm -hmm. <gasps> there's the Like a bunch of men, like a, like a small little woman, you know, she has no riot gear, nothing, and they're just hitting her. I saw this video of them, like a, a huge group of special forces dudes, beating the crap out of like a seven-year-old boy. Like oh, it yeah. is so visibly a child. It's crazy. So... I yeah, a lot of people are just like uh, going in the middle of night and then writing um, anti-regime chants on the walls. That's because that has picked up a lot. Yeah. So there's a lot of that happening right now. This one, I don't know if I could. I think I can show this one because it doesn't actually show any hitting or anything. This is just another video of the protesters overwhel overwhelming the regime's mm -hmm. uh, forces. So these are the regime forces and look what the protesters do. Yes! Is he yelling Yahoo saying? Yeah, y'all are saying, yeah. See, like, even religious people are on the side of people. Like, people, the man is saying, yo, Hussein, yo, Hussein. Yo, the, the main thing is that the regime officers don't feel safe. It used to be that the, pro, like, now they're feeling how a lot of the people feel because people don't feel safe to go protest because there's a lot of things that could happen to them. But now it's also turning, it's making a lot of the people who are supposed to come and, you know, attack the people, they are afraid now as well because things could happen to them, right? Um, yeah. I've so seen a, a lot of videos of besieges and special forces people getting very violently assaulted. Like, yeah, there's videos I can't show. Yeah. There are so many videos that I can't show. These are the ones that I think I can show. Oh, um, you definitely can't. Yeah. There was it's one I saw that they were they were hitting a Basiji. The people were hitting a Basiji. It was I, I don't know if you want me to show send that to you. It was really bad. It was really bloody. I've I've I think I saw that one. Yeah. You saw that one? Okay, okay. It's so hard for me to watch because I don't like to see people like getting hurt like that even though and he was like on the ground like this and he was like order like stop hitting me and they would like hitting him with like a big like a bit drawn and he was like bleeding from his head it was so brutal it was so brutal it was yeah anyways uh, I can't show that. yeah i'm like anyways. this is what happens when you have to overthrow fascists but i don't like to see anyone getting beaten to death <laughs> Yeah, um, I feel bad for feeling good sometimes seeing the regime. I see like regime um, officials get overwhelmed and sometimes I get them, see them getting hurt by the people. And I feel bad for feeling good.
I don't know. I, don't know. I think based on your experience, like that's very valid. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know and if that's I'm a lot better than a lot evil. of people I speak to. Like they wish a lot worse. Yeah, I know. I, know. I just don't like turning. I don't. I don't want to turn into a monster when, while following monsters, as Nietzsche Nietzsche used to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, okay. Can we clap for the next news? Wait, this is a good point by Bara. I don't like violence on any side, but they could always, you know, stop murdering civilians. Yeah, I mean, considering the self-defense as legitimate is one thing, which I, I am fully supporting. I fully support the Iranian people's right to defend themselves against violence, and which it could include using violence yourself. Okay, like logically supporting that is easy, uh, but feeling good about seeing it happen to them that is um harder to justify right but it's a feeling um i mean you can't control feelings i don't know i just want to yeah. make sure i just want to make sure i just want to make sure that i don't become a hateful person um yeah. yes so Serg so Serg saying i don't feel good but who can really blame the iranian people for this anger yeah true it's just yeah you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.